We just got our first glimpse of America's new stealthy air-launched nuclear missile, the AGM-181 Long Range Standoff Weapon, or LRSO for short. So let's run down what we can glean from this new render, what we know about this new weapon, and what this all means for America's deterrent nuclear posture. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. The AGM-181 LRSO has been quietly in development since 2017, and in 2023, we learned that the U.S. Air Force had secretly test-launched this weapon at least five times between 2020 and 2022, with those tests seemingly going so well that the missile is said to already be ready for service. It's just waiting on its new W-80-TAC-4 dial-a-yield nuclear warheads that will allow the LRSO to strike targets with a relatively small 5-kiloton blast, about one-third the power of the bomb dropped on Hiroshima in 1945, or a much larger 150-kiloton blast, or about 10 times the power of the Hiroshima bomb. Now, the LRSO is meant to replace America's long-serving AGM-86B nuclear-armed air-launched cruise missiles, which entered service all the way back in 1982 and provide non-stealth bombers like the B-52 Stratofortress the ability to conduct deep nuclear strikes inside enemy territory without coming within range of adversary air defenses. Now, the AGM-86 has an unclassified range of more than 1,500 miles, carrying a similar but more dated W-80-TAC-1 dial-a-yield warhead. Now, the AGM-86, like the LRSO when it enters service, represents the standoff portion of the airborne leg of America's nuclear triad, alongside B-61 and B-83 series nuclear gravity bombs that can be dropped from stealth aircraft at much closer range ranges, platforms like the F-35 and the B-2 Spirit. Now, the other two legs of that nuclear triad include land-based weapons, namely America's Minuteman III ICBMs, soon to be replaced by the Sentinel ICBM, and sea-based systems, like the Trident II SLBM, carried by America's Ohio-class nuclear ballistic missile submarines. Now, while dated, the AGM-86 is actually still a pretty stealthy cruise missile, and it reportedly drew at least some of its its design elements directly from Boeing's defunct Model 85321 Quiet Bird stealth aircraft program from literally decades earlier. A single B-52 can launch as many as 20 of these nuclear missiles, with six mounted on two external pylons and another eight deployed from a rotary launcher held inside the weapons bay. And while details about the capabilities of the new LRSO are still classified, there are at least a couple of things we can assess with a fair bit of certainty based on the nature of the program and this newly released render. First and foremost, this weapon is all but certainly stealthier than its predecessor, with a distinctly angular fuselage and not a single 90-degree angle to be found on the airframe. Assuming this new weapon has a broadly similar size to the AGM-86 at around 21 feet long and about 24 and a half inches in diameter, that means we're talking about an extremely small target on radar, especially if this new weapon is also adorned in modern radar absorbent coatings, which are said to be capable of absorbing upwards of 80% of inbound electromagnetic energy, or, you know, radar waves. Like the AGM-86, it's generally expected that this new weapon will be subsonic, which might surprise some people in this era of hypersonic hype. But in reality, stealthy subsonic cruise missiles are honestly a lot harder to detect than hypersonic glide vehicles are. These weapons can fly at low altitudes, hiding behind the curvature of the Earth and then the terrain itself to avoid intercept as they close with their targets. And subsonic performance also allows for more efficient propulsion and infrared signature mitigation. Or, you know, put simply, it allows for a much greater range than a supersonic or hypersonic weapon of the same scale would allow, while also pumping out a lot less heat for infrared-guided weapons to change after. Now, interestingly, this new render doesn't show an air intake, which is something that we would expect to see on a cruise missile like this. 
Unlike ballistic missiles, which are powered by conventional rocket motors that carry their own oxidizer on board, cruise missiles are powered by air-breathing jet engines, just like tactical aircraft. The AGM-86, for instance, is powered by an F-107 WR-101 turbofan that pumps out around 600 pounds of thrust, which is enough to propel the weapon to around 0.73 Mach, or right around 560 miles per hour, depending on altitude. The LRSO is expected to fly under turbofan power as well, but exactly what kind of turbofan isn't clear. Some sources report that it will carry a new engine, the F-107 WI-106, which is a derivative of both that older 101 found in the AGM-86 and the much newer F-107 WR-105 that already powers America's longer-ranged iterations of the very stealthy JASM line of cruise missiles. Now, it's possible that this renders just omitting that air intake for security reasons, or maybe the intake's on the top of the weapon and isn't visible from this angle. But of course, it is always possible that this new render is just smoke and mirrors, and the missile itself might not actually look much like this at all. The U.S. ultimately intends to buy 1,020 of these new missiles, ringing in at around $14 million apiece for a total acquisition cost of around $16 billion. Now, there had previously been discussion of fielding a conventionally armed variant of this weapon too, but at least for now, that plan seems to have been shelved. But before anybody starts posting panicked comments about America building thousands of new nuclear missiles as though that's some sort of prelude to war, you should know that the new W80 TAC-4 nuclear warheads are actually not new warheads at all, really, but are instead lifetime extension programs that refit and modernize existing warheads that are aging out of service, effectively taking old nukes that are no longer safe to store or employ and rebuilding them with modern safety standards and systems. And likewise, these new stealthy cruise missiles will replace aging AGM-86s that have been collecting dust since before I was born. You see, a lot of people tend not to realize it, but missiles, like most complex machines, come with expiration dates. And after more than 40 years, these missiles are just getting too old to maintain safely. Now, the W-80 TAC-4 nuclear warheads meant to equip these new missiles are slated to begin deliveries in 2027, and based on unclassified reports of the weapon's testing performance, it's likely to enter service very shortly thereafter. And once in service, these weapons will become the modernized B-52Hs, nuclear bread and butter, but they'll also be carried by America's new stealth bomber, the B-21 Raider, just to make them, well, I guess, extra scary. And with that, ends this short-fused edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news entertainment and now merch from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.